Welcome back to the Barber Coach TV. So I've knocked a short video together showing methods and simple techniques of how you can refine a fade and connect it to a heavier blend. I've had a few messages recently off our subscribers saying that they're struggling with a blending part of skin fades, especially with taking the skin fade higher. It's then a lot harder than to keep the blend heavier. So in this video, I'd like to show a few simple methods on how we can do that. And it's easier than you think. Less is definitely more with this sort of cut. So here you can see that I am just connecting now the fade zone to the blend zone. So I've opened up the lever fully on the JRL clippers. And I'm flicking through the fade line that I created with a zero. So the initial fade line was created with a zero. And then I've opened up the lever fully. Now on a JRL, that's nearly a one. But we'll call it a 0.8 just to be safe. Because there's no guard on there, it does get a little bit closer. So it's not quite a one. But then I'm flicking through the fade line, going underneath the line first with the teeth, lifting through the line and then out as I'm coming towards the blend zone, creating that heavier line just below uh, roads four and five. So where the recession zone would be on the top of the fade, where it connects to the top, I then flicked out with my fully open lever, creating that heavier, bolder line that you can see then just above the fade. So that's towards the top end of the blend zone then where it connects to the top. So now I'm just refining now between the blend zone and the fade zone, above that fade line with um, with the open zero, just using the corner and just the, the tips of the teeth just to break into the weight and the dark spots of the fade, just lightening the colour and then connecting the two zones. Now having some patience is the key here. I've seen so many online videos of people skin fading and they're working up so quickly and so firmly against the head. Yes, it might get out some of the darker spots easier, but it's going to be a lot more uncomfortable for the customer. And the faster you're moving with the clipper, the more hair you're going to miss, believe it or not. So just take your time and just be consistent and be patient and just let the clipper do the work. So keep working through the fade, targeting the dark spots, using the corners when needed, just to break up between the light and the dark areas, just letting some more light through into the darker spots, blurring out that fade. But be patient and take your time and just focus on refining. It's not a race. And believe it or not, the more consistent you are and the more accurate you are, the better it will be. Rushing and doing it quicker and firmer does not give you that accuracy. So you do just have to be patient and take your time. But you'll get more done effectively by taking your time, meaning that there's less work going back over or finding afterwards when you realise you've made mistakes. So now I'm going to be using the clipper comb. And I'm going to be just softening that dark zone that you can see that I'm pointing at there now. With clipper over comb methods, I'll be getting into the head as firm as I can with the comb and then just gliding through it, working upwards with the clipper. Now, as you can just see, I've removed the sections that would be in rows four and five, the blending sections above the recession zone. I've directed them forward out of the way of the top of the blend zone, making it easier then for me to refine the dark a bit in the blend zone, softening the look of that fade, but I'm not coming through the hair in the recession zone in rows four and five, because I want to maintain that weight to give me a bolder masculine shape then towards the top of the head where the blend connects to the fade. So I'm working underneath that bulk of hair, as you can see, just finishing the top of the blend zone, softening those dark spots, allowing a bit more light through, and just taking that blend zone slightly underneath rows four and five, so that I don't compromise then the weight that's left in the blend that we need to keep to add texture and boldness then and a square masculine shape, allowing the hair to grow out better, to hold its shape for longer and just to give an overall better look to the haircut and hairstyle itself. Now that I've controlled the shape in that blend zone just below the recession zones where the fade connects to the hair on top, I am now using the corner with a fully open lever and I'm just working in and out against the grain with the corner then to break up the final dark spots to really let more light into that blend zone, giving an overall faded, blurrier look, before moving on to the thinning scissors then to control the weight that's been left then in rows four and five of the blend. So now that I'm happy with the overall look of the blend zone and how it connects to the blend on top, I'm now going to be using a thinning scissors or a texturizing scissors, some would prefer to call them, and I'm just going to lift that bulk through that's been left in rows four and five. And I'm just going to nibble the ends, but directing the head down towards the blend rather than lifting it up too high and, and lightening the weight in the wrong places. 
directing the head down to where it's going to be sitting when styled is key to making sure that we take the right amount of weight away and allow it to sit as it should be then when finished. If we're directing the head into, into the wrong positions when styling it, we can accidentally remove too much weight in places the weight might need to be kept or leave too much weight behind where it should be removed. So always focus on moving the hair into the position of a style, directing the hair into the position that it'll be sitting when finished, and this will allow you then to make a more accurate judgment and finish on the hair by using these methods. I'm now using a similar technique that I used with a clipper when I was using a corner to refine it, but instead I'm just using the thinning scissors and I'm just poking into the weight, going against the grain, and just nibbling with the tip of the scissors into the dark spots just to remove any final bits of weight left in the fade. And the same with the blend, just nibbling it, not overdoing it. The thinning scissors can remove too much hair if you get scissor happy. So just at the right times and in the right places, just give it light nibbles until it starts to look right and fall into place. Now we're using the Barbalist Pro Trimmers just to refine the outlines of the shape up. It is important to make sure that we don't take these outlines too far in to the hair and into the scalp. It might look sharp on social media, it might allow the outline to look bolder, but the regrowth will be terrible in two to three days. All you will see is a shadow stubble around the outlines. It's not a good look and it's not good for your clients because it doesn't allow the haircut and the hairstyle to last as long as it should because it'll grow out looking terrible. You also saw me then just trim her over combing, just a few sections there in the blend, just again being fussy and just refining being patient and just being accurate. And now I'm just using the corner of the trimmer to take away the remaining bulk left below the fade zone. This will be the skin zone. Now the trimmer is easily collect connecting to the fade zone because the clippers are zero gapped. So I've initially created the line at the start that, that you would have seen at the start of the video with a zero, with a lever closed. I then work through that with a lever open to create the blend zone. The trimmer is connecting to that zero easily because the zero was zero gapped and because I'm flicking out and using the corner then to make that connection. If I was going in teeth first and pulling down, there's a good chance then that I will leave more lines. So I work it up through the skin zone and flicking out into the fade zone. It's connecting to the zero that I initially created that zone with easily, leaving less lines and make it easier then to refine it and finish that fade. Again, I'm still working up towards the blend zone, just trim or overcome and being a bit OCD. There's nothing wrong with that, that adds value to our service and adds value to the finish of the haircut, and it really makes the customers feel like that we are thorough and we care about the quality and standards that we provide for our clients. I hope this short close-up video has helped, just really focusing on, this on these techniques. If you have any questions or need any more help with specific areas, please message me on Instagram or through the email option on the Barber Coach TV, and I will create more videos like this that can really focus on the areas that you specifically need help with. Thank you very much for watching.